In this video, we're going to take a quick look at Kotlin for the Java developer. Now this, I will emphasize, this is only a quick look because there's quite a bit to talk about, but I want to take a look at an example Android application that was written in Java and consider how it can be written in Kotlin and kind of do some compare and contrast. So the first time I heard about Kotlin, it was with a, a place that I've worked with before called Pax Publishing, where they do some video courses. I had written a few video courses for them, and they asked me about writing this one, which is Learn Kotlin by Developing Android Apps. And so my response was twofold. Number one, sure. Number two, what's Kotlin? And I'm a bit pragmatic about new programming languages because a lot of them come out very frequently not all of them are going to catch on. And so you only really want to invest time in something that you think is really going to catch on, not something that's more ephemeral. So I did this uh, Learn Kotlin by Developing Android Apps, and at first I thought, eh, okay, is it really worth it? But after I wrote this, this video course, I went back to writing Java again, and I thought, what am I doing? It was really weird going from Kotlin back to Java and just realizing all the boilerplate stuff that Kotlin takes away. I did also create an app on the Play Store called Plant Flashcards, and this is entirely written in Kotlin, uh, no Java in it. It is a pure Kotlin app deployed out and used on the Play Store. Uh, it compiles to an APK just like a Java-based application would, same thing. So Kotlin for the Java developer. First of all, what is Kotlin? It's a statically typed programming language, which means we don't have a variable type and an object type the object type essentially is the variable type. So we talk a lot about polymorphism. It's kind of a different consideration in Kotlin because we don't really have that theory of variable type. When we declare a variable, we declare it either as var, which means it can change, or val, which means it's essentially final. With Kotlin, we have less boilerplate code. So getters and setter methods, things that we kind of did mechanically before, we don't necessarily need them in Kotlin, but we can use them if we explicitly wanted to do something besides a simple get and set. Nice thing about Kotlin is with any new programming language, you have a lot of legacy code that you have to decide what to do with. Well, the nice thing about Kotlin is that it interoperates with Java and with Android. So in other words, you can have a, a, an Android application that's partially Java, partially Kotlin, because Kotlin is still going to compile the same way Java will, and it will run the same way that Java will. So we know that it needs this interoperability. One other thing is it needs good IDE support. And we have that as well because Kotlin was developed by JetBrains. JetBrains is the company behind IntelliJ. IntelliJ is the foundation for Android Studio. So Kotlin was written by the same company that developed our IDE. So why Kotlin? Well, it's a new way to null. If you've ever experienced a null pointer exception in Java, you've probably experienced this frustration and you'd like a better way to do things. So Kotlin has a different way to do things. Less boilerplate syntax. We talked about that one a little bit. No checked exceptions. This is one that a lot of people like about Kotlin and personally, I'm a little nervous about it. A checked exception happens in Java, usually when you're leaving the JVM to do something like access a file or access a database or access a network. And with a checked exception, you have to either rethrow it or wrap it in a try catch block. So uh, without a checked exception, you're not required to do either of those things. It simply is treated as an unchecked exception. So you have to be a bit more conscious of what you're doing outside of the JVM and what your fallback plan is if what you're doing simply doesn't work as you expect it to do. But on the flip side, you don't have to stop and write try catches all the time and you don't have to uh, do throw exception all the time like you would have to in Java. Now I told you I'm a bit nervous about this, but the counter argument that I'm sure a lot of people are thinking right now is that people just didn't understand exceptions in Java in general. And a lot of times you'd see a try with an empty catch block, which was not a good idea because you're taking very good information about an exception and you're throwing it away. So while Kotlin doesn't have checked exceptions, a lot of people will argue that developers in Java didn't handle them right anyway. Another thing that's really nice about Kotlin are these Kotlin Android extensions. If you've done find view by ID to get access to a component on a layout inside of an activity, 
you don't have to do that anymore. The Kotlin extensions make it really easy so you don't have to say, oh gosh, what's this view on my layout? I need to bring it in. Several niceties we have in Kotlin. So some things that you can forget if you're a Java developer. Forget about variable types. Objects will still have types, but variables will not. You no longer have to use the keyword new when calling a constructor. I do that all the time by mistake, but the new keyword doesn't exist in Kotlin. You don't have to end lines with a semicolon. And you don't have checked exceptions. A lot of times things will just degrade to returning null essentially instead of throwing something like a null pointer exception. So several things that we can forget about. Even more, this is not a, and this is not a comprehensive list by any means. Now, how do we declare a variable? I mentioned that var means that the variable can be reassigned and val means it's a final variable. Uh, so, and then we'll say val, val or var and then a variable name and then an equal sign and then oftentimes we'll call a constructor. One really handy thing about Kotlin is we can define all attributes in a constructor signature. So in other words, you might be used to this syntax in Java where we have a DTO or essentially a noun class and it's very verbose with some getter and setter methods that are really boilerplate. They don't really change too much. Let's see how we could do a similar thing in Kotlin. If I take a look in Kotlin, I can take a look at the plant DTO class and take a look. This is it. 13 lines total, most of them are white space. So essentially, we are declaring the attributes all in line in this constructor signature here. So what you'll see is our variable declaration and then a name, and then if we wish, we can follow it with a type. You'll see one other thing that's really interesting here as well, which is we can optionally give these attributes default values in this constructor signature. So it's an interesting way to do constructors because constructors and methods, because we could have a method or as Kotlin says, a function that has maybe 10 different parameter variables. Three of those might have default values. That means we can call that function by passing in only seven values and the other three will fall to the default. That means a lot less overloaded methods because our method signatures are much more flexible. Handling nulls. So this is something that a lot of people like about Kotlin. Uh, by default, we cannot put null into a variable in Kotlin. But if we take a question mark and add it to the variable type, then that means that this is a nullable type. In other words, we can store null in that value. Now, what's interesting is what happens if we call, well, let's think about Java. What happens if we call a method on a variable and we have not put an object into that variable? We get a null pointer exception. In Kotlin, if we call a function on a variable, and we have not put anything in that variable, so the variable is holding a null, it doesn't throw a null pointer exception, it simply returns null. But then we can use this thing called the Elvis operator, which is the question mark colon. This says we're trying to call a function on a variable. The variable has a question mark indicating that it might indeed contain a null. If it contains a null, then don't run this function. Instead, just return what follows this Elvis operator of question mark colon. In other words, return the word foo. On the other hand, if the variable does contain an object, then go ahead and just run the function on that object and return the result of that. So a nice one line easy way to handle null variables and what happens if we call a function or a method on a null variable. Let's look at some examples. Let's say I have var foo. Notice no semicolon because I don't need one in Kotlin. If I have var foo, I'm declaring a variable of type foo uh, and I'm not putting anything in it. Now I do need to specify the type, but don't worry about that. If I were to call size on this variable foo, it would simply return null, unlike Java, where Java would throw a null pointer exception. Now if I said foo.size and then I use the Elvis operator and then minus one, it will notice that foo contains a null reference, so instead of invoking size, it simply propagates through that minus one. Now let's look at this another way. Let's say I had var foo equals list plant ETO. In this case, the object type is list of plant ETO objects. So that's also the variable type. Now you notice that we don't just have an, an unassigned variable here. We have a variable that contains a list of plant ETOs. So if I call foo.size in this case, it's going to return zero because I have not put anything into that um, anything into my list here. But if I use the Elvis operator 
and I have foo dot size Elvis operator minus one, it's still going to return zero because in this case it knows that foo is not null, so it's safe to go ahead and invoke that method on the variable called foo. So that's a look at nulls. Of course, a lot of practice will make that really sink in. With. With is an interesting one and one that I like in Kotlin. If you find you're invoking a series of methods on the same variable, or you're calling a series of attributes on the same variable, you can use with to make it look a lot cleaner. So here's what something looks like in Java. You see, we are creating a specimen DTO object and we're calling a series of methods on that specimen DTO object. A whole lot of typing. Here's what it looks like in Kotlin. We start by declaring our specimen DTO and then we have a with operator and in parentheses we have specimen DTO. That means for every line that follows, invoke that on the specimen DTO variable. Also, there's a little shortcut here where instead of calling get text, you can just shorten it and use the attribute text. So get text means that you're getting the value of an attribute called text. Here you can just go straight to that attribute. So you see Java and Kotlin, if you compare these two, you see that the Kotlin version is a whole lot less typing. And this is very typical with Kotlin. Overloading the easy way, we talked about this a little bit earlier, so I'll just kind of uh, give an example here. I have a function called measure up, that should be a lowercase f function there. You see I have var size, which means I'm declaring a variable size. Then I have var min colon int equals zero. That means that I can pass either one parameter to this function or two. If I pass in one parameter, it will be assigned to the size variable, and the min variable will get the default zero. If I pass two arguments, one will go to the size variable, the other will go to the min variable. So in Java, we would tend to overload because in Java, the number of arguments that we pass into a method has to match the number of arguments that the method is prepared to accept. But in Kotlin, we can have these default values that we assign to parameters, which means ah, if nothing's passed in, just fall over and use the default instead. So it saves us from making a lot of extra overloaded methods. For each, this is an interesting one. Uh, anything that is iterable, so anything that we can iterate over, has a special function called for each, which simply says, okay, uh, invoke this function and you can shake hands with everything in my collection. When you invoke this for each, it by default becomes the iteration variable. In other words, the things that you're shaking hands with. If I take a look at an example, we see that children hold some collection of some type. So children.foreach means I want to shake hands with everything in that collection. And every time I iterate, or in other words, every time I loop, the next value that's in this collection will be stored in the variable IT. So you see, this is essentially a loop in Kotlin, a whole lot less typing than a traditional for or for each loop in Java. So that's a quick look at Kotlin, let's say there's much, much more to go, but that's a quick look at the things we'll see in Kotlin. In the videos that follow, you're going to see us do several things in Kotlin, including integrate Kotlin with uh, retrofit so that we can parse JSON into Kotlin, and also integrate Kotlin with Firebase and use some of our Kotlin handiness. Here's an example of the with operator I talked about earlier. So. Uh, each of these lines, specimen.plant name, specimen.location, specimen.description, you see that implicitly it's invoking these attributes on this variable specimen. Uh, you'll see several other things here, like how we extend a class, GPS a plant, we use a colon to say that this extends from app compat activity, and uh, several other things that we're going to walk through that show how we can write an Android application with Kotlin. So I will say, since I, since I worked on that initial video course in September 2017, I've really seen Kotlin take off quite a bit in industry. I think that it is going to continue to grow, just my prediction. I think it will continue to grow. I've seen a lot of Java developers gravitate to it. It's also very similar to Xcode if you're uh, used to iOS app development, so an easy transition to make. So I hope you enjoy these videos, and I look forward to seeing your comments. Thank you.